All right, hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So yeah, we are gonna go to Petco. We're gonna get some saltwater snails. But now, before we get those snails and before we go to Petco, I'm gonna throw you back to two days ago when I went over a treatment for the red slime algae I was having in my tank. Now, while we are on the topic of salt water, uh, we have a bit of a problem here, and that is this red slime coating my gravel. Now, this stuff that looks like algae really isn't algae. It's a type of bacteria. It's called cyanobacteria. It's mainly red in saltwater aquariums, but sometimes in freshwater tanks it can be green. And there's our starfish just having a great time in case you're wondering. But there is a very easy remedy to this, and it's called ChemiClean. I was not sponsored by them. I've just used it before, and it works. As you can see, it's pretty much safe for everything, and all it does is it gets rid of this red slime you see everywhere. Wow. You basically take some of this white powder and dissolve it in tank water. It does overactivate protein skimmers, which is annoying, so you have to kind of uh, take the collection cup off so it doesn't overflow. Then we just take this and dump it in here, and it takes about 48 hours for it to go ahead and completely get rid of the red stuff. So I'll be back in 48 hours. Two days later. So just about 40 hours, not quite 48, you can see there is a big difference in the gravel. Wow. It is no longer covered in that nasty red slime. It's simply covered in diatoms, which is basically just brown algae. So ChemiClean did work pretty well, as you can see. We had no ill effects on anything. The anemone's fine, the fish are all fine, and so is the starfish. So everything did completely fine. The only issue is that you get micro bubbles in the aquarium. And that's because ChemiClean overactivates your protein skimmer. As you can see, mine is going crazy. That's because I took the collection cup off because it kept overflowing. But now once we get ready to our water change soon, because we do a water change after 48 hours of ChemiClean, we'll go ahead and put the collection cup back on and things will go back to normal. All right, now that that's done, the tank is looking good. All that red slime stuff is gone. We can go ahead and head to Petco, grab a few snails to go ahead and help clean up the tank, maybe clean some algae off the rocks. So I'll see you at Petco. Okay, now is it just me or do I go to Petco in every single video? Because I think I do. So we're gonna be going to buy snails at Petco. And I'm... Okay, this isn't gonna work. I'll just see you when we get there. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, now I can explain things a little bit better. So we're at Petco and I'm gonna go ahead and be looking at their saltwater snails. The title says buying all of them. We'll see what happens. But we're gonna run in there and see what kind of snails they have for my reef aquarium. So first up in their saltwater section, we had my yellow tang. Okay, then there was also some normal just chromis and some snails. Obviously, there's a coral beauty in here as well as some shrimp. Some more chromis and damsels. And then there's the maroon clown, I believe, down here. Uh, some more damsels in here. That's kind of all my Petco has is damsels and clownfish. More clownfish down there, there, and then just snails in that last tank. Now on to inverts, they had this weird forehand starfish. And then there was also a whole bunch of snails. Obviously, that's why we're here. Tons of different kinds of snails, which is good. That's what we want. There's some asterisk snails right there with some algae. But they also had some cool shrimp, and I wanted to get a shrimp, but they were just really expensive, so I didn't. But yeah, cool cleaner shrimp, and that's about it. Okay, so we got our snails, and there is four of them in here. So what I did was I bought all the snails that were in a certain aquarium. You know how they have like nine fish tanks? I picked one of them, and I got all the snails that were in there. This was the aquarium I chose from, doesn't really matter. But there were three turbo snails and one asterisk snail. They're all kind of trying to eat each other right now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go home and get these guys acclimating and hopefully they don't kill each other on the way back Okay, so I made it back with these snails go ahead and get this lid off get this out of the way And then we're gonna start by temp acclimating these guys now snails are a lot more sensitive to water parameter changes Than fish and stuff like that So we're gonna first temp acclimate these guys and then I'm gonna switch over to drip acclimation to get them used to this water The exact same thing I did with my starfish back there, but now while these guys are acclimating I'm gonna go ahead and give you my six and a half to seventh month update on the current USA Loop Aquarium system. If you remember about six months ago, I got the system sent to me by Current USA to go ahead and do a little review, kind of check everything out, test the system out on my reef. And I have to say, I've been very impressed so far. All of my corals have thrived, as far as I know, with the lights. They've all grown a ton, and they all are showing amazing colors. I couldn't be happier with the current USA light setup. It's slim, it's very discreet, you can barely even see it on the tank, and it's done amazing for my corals. Now the wave pump has also worked perfect for me. I have not had any issues with that either. It's done everything it's supposed to do. I keep it at 30% on the pulse mode, so basically every 0.3 seconds it turns on and off. So it gives this nice kind of bouncing movement to the coral and the anemone, and they seem to really, really like it. The only issue I had with the wave pump was that the foam anemone protector, it's a foam piece that goes over the intake slots on the outside of the wave pump that's designed to keep the anemone or coral or stuff like that from being sucked in. 
I kept having that blow off and it just would never stay on the wave pump. I just ended up taking it off. My anemone has never moved. My anemone stayed on the rock the entire time I've had it, so it hasn't been an issue for me. Now the actual app and the controller itself has been perfect, it always connects as soon as I open the app, it's never been laggy. The only other issue I've had with this system is that the little temperature probe that goes in the sump hasn't been the most accurate for me, but for the most part it gives you a general idea of what your tank's temperature is. I've never had any issues with my temperature, it's always been 78.8 pretty much. I never have any issues with my phone finding the Bluetooth controller, and there's a ton of cool features in the app that you don't get if you would just have a normal remote or something like that to control your lights and pumps with. The programming is also very straightforward, so that was very helpful to me as well. Bruh. Okay, so the snails have been drip acclimating for a while. They're ready to go in. Let me go ahead and stop this. And now I'm just going to go ahead and grab these guys one by one. There's actually two of them. I'm going to go ahead and just set these guys on this rock. They're probably going to end up falling off, but there they are. And then these last two are also gonna go on that same rock. Two days later. Okay, so it is two days later, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you an update on the snails because they're doing really, really well. They've made amazing headway on that rock that was covered in algae. It's a little hard to see, but this rock was absolutely covered in algae, and it looks amazing now. This whole tower looks a lot better than it did. They did knock one of my frags down, but uh, oh well. I don't know how they did that, actually. It was glued down. But the snails are all doing really good. There's one right there. There's another one on the back wall. There's one right there. And then I don't know where the fourth one is, but he's got to be here somewhere. But overall, this tank is doing really good. The clownfish host my hammer coral instead of their anemone like they're supposed to. So that's kind of weird. But other than that, everything's doing good. These zoanthids are spreading like crazy. So I might have to move this Duncan coral down here to give them some more room once they keep growing. But that is pretty much it for the reef tank. It's doing really, really good. I should have a new filter for this thing coming, an RODI filter, you know, the thing that filters the water before we do water changes. So you should see a video on that soon. I'm really excited for that. I can't wait to give that a try. We can check out the freshwater planted tank while we're here. The leaves on my Anubias are starting to get fuzzy. Uh, not sure why, but they are. But these plants are also doing really good. I dose fertilizer every week, so the plants are doing fine pretty much. The fish are doing even better though. We'll go ahead and feed these guys. Just go ahead and give them some flakes. Kind of overfed them, but it's fine. They'll be okay. We got lots of plants to suck up the nutrients, but these guys are doing really, really well. The turtle's also doing amazing. Just went ahead and gave him some food and he's gonna go ahead and munch on that. He's grown so much and he's just doing really, really well. The koi pond is doing really well. As you can see, we still have algae in the pond, but we don't have the string algae like we did. So everything is still covered in this like felt looking algae, but we don't have the long, oh, there goes the pleco. The pleco just swam right by. The pleco, by the way, is doing amazing. He loves this because there's so much food for him. But as you can see, we don't have the crazy string algae like we did. There's still algae, but it's not as bad. And we can thank my massive umbrella here, as well as that new algae supplement we've been dosing for that. The water lettuce is also still doing great and it's making more little water lettuce babies, which is amazing. The water hyacinth is not looking too hot. And then I went ahead and added pothos right here and a tiny bit over there. Now this is just a plant, it's roots dangle in the water and it just makes the waterfall look a little bit nicer. The ducks are doing duck things. And this little guy right here has become quite aggressive. He'll actually chase me and try to bite me. Uh, we'll see if I can get him to do it. So if I back away from the coop and pretend like I'm leaving, he does that little thing, right? But then if they're out like this and I try to walk away, he goes full on, tries to bite me, tries to bite my hand. But other than that, they're doing good. I went ahead and moved their pool over here and put a whole bunch of cucumber in it. As you can see, they ate almost all of it. I put like 20 slices in, there's only one left. But they're doing absolutely amazing still, just quacking and being good little ducks, except for Butter who likes to bite me. Stop, stop it, stop, stop it. Just be nice, just be, don't bite. Anyway guys, that is gonna be pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed us getting some saltwater snails or snails for the reef tank. That is it for this video. Good, bye.